Hey, what's up guys? I hope you're doing great. Just before this video starts, I want to make a very fun, exciting and awesome announcement that I will be attending to 3D Meetup Sweden, a 3D printing event here in Sweden, April 14th. So if you want to meet me and or just have a good time at a 3D printing uh, event, then please go and check the description below. Uh, you can read more about the event there. Just know that I would love to meet as many of you as possible. So April 14th, I'll see you there. I got so excited that I threw myself a nosebleed. It's my nose, right? Oh. It looks like a homicide has taken place in the bathroom, but let's just get right into this, okay? So I stumbled across this bionic 3D printed exoskeleton glove, basically, uh, designed by this guy Alex from 3D Printed. It looks just fantastic. He did such a good job, and, and I knew the second I saw it that that would be something that I wanted to share with you guys. So I printed all the parts, and it was a mad amount, well over 100 pieces. Uh, mostly printed on the CR-10S, I believe, with, uh, with gray, black, and blue PLA filament, even though Alex very specifically said that you should use ABS, or at least that he did. Now, apparently, you should be able to assemble these parts. You can tear stuff apart. I just feel like a straight-up badass for an hour. Smash. I cleaned out my local hardware store. You need 80 screws and 80 washers, but it doesn't really specify which washer or which screw, so hopefully I'm covered. I am not 100% sure this is the best option. These are some 2.5 mil, 12 millimeters in length, but they certainly grip well in the PLA plastic. So if you plan to make this, that might be what you're looking for. That's kind of the center in which everything attaches to 10 of those, and then you have what those attaches to, and that's the wrist mounts uh, that helps everything in place. And then we have a total of 10 finger attachments that, that the claws will be attached to and uh, we're doing some great progress so let's not stop here 328 a.m. Hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just the way you have like parts that fit into other parts that then assembles to the entire thing it reminds me of of Lego or, or McConnell if anyone had that stuff you know, I was worried about how well these would fit my fat fingers, but I don't know what I was worried about. These look great and they feel really comfortable. This here is step number one for transforming into a Terminator. You know, judgment day is approaching. Okay, so I'm just gonna reprint these claws that goes on each end of the finger, just like so, uh, because I found that they are a tad too small, so they are a bit tight and end up cracking like this one did. So I'm just gonna go ahead and reprint 10 of them, also with a higher temperature, so hopefully the uh, layer bond is a bit stronger. Oh, I'm a dope. Ran out of filament. And Simon, you might ask, isn't this the sole purpose of having a filament sensor? Well, that's how I'm even more of a dope than you initially realized, because I did this to the filament sensor.
Well, this brings up a very interesting subject and that's how you recover from failed prints and let me show you how I usually do it. So I go to edit process settings and I go to start printing at height and I know that we completed 38.4 millimeters of, of the print. So I will list that as the start printing at height and then you might want to do go to additions and uh, still have an offset but it's going to be much greater and um, that's going to allow us to, to adjust the, the height when, when it's actually starting to print. I'll show you that later. So now if we prepare the print you will see this. It will print the remaining part of the print which um, usually works pretty well. So uh, let's give this a shot. There we go, now let's just go and get the EXO gloves. We will be adding the claws. Uh, I did add some, uh, some of my nose blood to enhance the real and wow factor. Uh, but before we put them on, I wanna test these individually and just see how well they work. Uh, they have these slots within them so they can move, so that's why our fingers can move and not just stick in place. I'm not a huge fan of the gray and blue, it's not a great color match, but the overall construction just looks fantastic. So let's put them on and see how they feel. I already feel 10 times stronger. All right, let's uh, put on the claws and uh, smash some stuff. <laughs> This here is such a smile maker. I I am really happy with the result. Though I'm not gonna put on these covers. Just the fact that they cover the mechanical inside, let's say, is you know the opposite of what I want. I want them exposed like this. Uh, but also they bring these um, these brackets closer together, so it kind of locks up the the fingers on. So that might have something to do with the ABS stuff that Alex was talking about. But. Um, uh, probably not. It's just an alignment issue. But if you do want to use these covers, make sure you use some sandpaper to make it rough. It just makes it look more authentic. I guess a normal soda can is a better representation than anything else. I think going against something like this barehanded would hurt as hell. So it would be interesting to see if this actually protects me and makes me able to smash this object. Okay, let's get started. Okay, I'm just gonna go for it. That is really, really cool. I felt absolutely nothing. Okay, hey, round two. Ding, ding. I may never take these off. <laughs> no, but seriously, I love when a project is so fun to make. I love when, when the result is awesome. Seriously, I, I love the design of this. Uh, I will definitely keep it as a prop just to have around the, uh, the garage. Man, that looks awesome. Make sure you comment what you think about these exoskeleton gloves and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Have an awesome day, bye.